frustration to Jerry. I was actually supposed to tell you my story, but it wasn't written, so I'm following the written schedule. And I got a little out of whack. And I apologize to my assistant here because he's the one who had to jump ahead of my presentation to get to uh, Jerry. So I'm going to go ahead and cover mine now before we get back into the lineup. Are you okay with that, Robert? With me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I might hear everybody back here for the years. Okay. Hey, can you guys hear me okay back there? Do I need to talk to Mike? Would be better for you? Okay. A lot of my presentation is going to be about the Chickasaw National Park in South Central Oklahoma. Uh, I've been doing a lot of research in the Pine Mountain area uh, on my own before I came in contact with, with Darren. And uh, Jerry mentioned uh, what, what he called the Ridge Walker video. Uh, I was involved with getting that in uh, the fall of 2005. And then in February of 2006, I went to the Chickasaw National Park because of the gentleman that I was researching with had researched that park and lived close to that park and he had seen them in the park several times. So I started reading up on the park and there was another gentleman who had, had a website and everything talking about seeing Bigfoot's there, he had pictures and things like that. So my goal was to go to the park. But I had also looked into the area and there were newspaper articles, there were, there were all kinds of evidence that there was something going on in this park. And so I read one sighting report that someone had gone into town one or two towns over in Davis or somewhere over there and uh, saw a movie and came back to their campsite. When they came back to their campsite and pulled into it about 10.30 at night, something ran from their campsite on two legs covered in hair. So I, re I read that report and I was thinking to myself, I'm going to devise a way to go in there and set up a campsite and hide and make it. Those animals will go into a campsite. I just need to make my campsite appear empty. And, and But anyway, so that was my plan. I had never been to the park before. The gentleman that I had researched with told me what campsite I should go to. It was February of 2006. I pulled into the park, and there was no camp post. It was, it was the off season. It was, it was a chilly day. So I pull around Rock Creek, down Rock Creek, and I camp, park my truck at campsite number 30, which is just, you know, 30, 40 yards. 50 yards off of uh, Rock Creek, but it's a one-way park, so you can only drive in one way. So at that particular campsite, your truck is parked with the rear towards the creek that runs this way. So I'm at a campsite. I, it's, you know, five o'clock in the afternoon. I hurry up and I set up a tent and I set up a table full of food and I just lay out bags of chips and, and fruits and melons and just all the smorgasbord of baits out on this table. And then I go into town get something to eat. And I eventually come back and at the camp post area up, up, at the front. I stop my truck and I get in and I take blankets up to the insides of all the windows of my truck. And I have I had it to where it could open up right over my steering wheel. And I was actually driving through the park, getting to my campsite, looking through that little drapery to get to my campsite. When I got to my campsite, I shut my truck off, I closed the drapes, and I stayed in my truck. Never got out, never at all. I had my food in there with the truck with me. I just leaned the seat back, I leaned my food, I had a parabolic mic on the top of my truck so that I could listen to my headset, to listen to anything in the park. And that was my plan, to spend all night in my truck in the hopes that something would happen. And, and, and did it happen? Did it, did it happen in a big way? Uh, I'm saying 10, 11 o'clock, my food's all ate, it's dark in there, I've got an ice chest beside me, my truck is full of supplies, I mean really, the only spot I had was the driver's seat. And so all I could do is just lean it back. And I'm listening with the microphone. And with a parabolic mic, if you've ever listened to one, you can hear so many details of everything going on. And what, what happens with a parabolic mic, you get caught up in the cadence of the nighttime sounds. You, you know, you hear what's happening at night, and it, it creates just a little melody of, of the sameness. And sometimes that's disturbed by movement, and you notice immediately that's not natural. There's something moving around. Well, that's what happened to me. I'm in my truck. And I immediately start hearing footsteps. I hear footsteps crunching through the leaves. This is February. Nothing but dead leaves on the ground in the air of Oklahoma that didn't have much moisture, no snow, no snow. 
And, and I'm hearing something walk through me. You hear just crunch, crunch. Are you asking a question over there? No. Oh. So I'm hearing something walk through the leaves. At that point, I'm not really excited. I'm just saying, wow, I'm going to pay attention. So I'm hearing something. And the way these campsites are set up, as most campsites, you have gravel pathways that separate each campsite. Each campsite has the metal lantern post, things like that. And uh, so when I hear this thing leave the leaves, he exit the leaves that he's walking in, and he, he must obviously be on a gravel path. I hear what sounds like a stick being drugged through gravel. And it, that makes a distinct sound. You know what a stick sounds like when it's dragged through gravel. Very clearly what it is. And, and every time he would go into a, a patch of leaves, it, the stick was no longer dragging in gravel. So I'm assuming he's dragging it while he's walking through the leaves too. I can only assume. And then occasionally I would hear metal posts back being tapped. Ding! And then another 10 seconds later, I hear another post, ding, along with the footsteps and the stick dragging. All of these things are coming into my head at once. And I'm thinking something's going through the park. It's got a stick. I'm tapping these posts like it's going to each campsite. Then I hear a trash can lid come off. At that time, they had just regular metal trash cans with trash can lids. And some of them had cinder blocks on top of them to keep the raccoons out. Uh, something was looking in the trash cans. And Specifically, I've been in that park many times since, and there's times I've heard raccoons pop those cans off, and you'll hear them roll around. A lot of them are held tethered by little chains, or, or some of them are broken. You hear a raccoon pop one off, and it'll roll around like a quarter on the ground, and, you know, so you know that sound. These were getting put back on, so something was looking in the trash and put back on, and it was cold that night. You know, I've had people ask me, well, are you sure it wasn't a homeless person looking for food? Well, first of all, <laughs> The camp was closed down. The gate, I was at campsite 30, which is right at the closed gate that gated off the, the other hundred and some odd campsites that were gated off and shut down for the season. This thing was in that part of the park looking through empty trash cans. So if a homeless person that lives in a town close to there, you have no, there's nothing in those trash cans back there. Nobody can camping back there. But you'll find out later when I talk about the other gentleman. Those trash cans were being baited by this other gentleman that lives in that area who was baiting the trash cans. So these animals knew that that's where they were coming food. I didn't know this gentleman at this time. I talked to him later. This is just what happened to me. I hear the thing looking in the trash cans, put the lid back on, walking through the park. Eventually, believe me, when I'm hearing this, I'm getting a little excited. I'm sitting in the dark, and I'm like, could this be? This, this could be happening here. And I. I hear this thing who had been moving continuously through the park for you know an hour or more, doing going where he went or doing what doing what he's doing, and for the first time I hear him stop and just stop in the leaves, and I'm and then I'm, I'm getting on. I'm like, okay, he's he sees me. He's got his, he's got to be looking at my camp. Like, why else is he stopping? And then I would hear him move a little bit and just stop. And I'm listening. I hear him move a little bit and then stop. Man, I was starting to wig out a little bit. Then I, I'm like, he's, he's, he's encroaching into my campsite. He's just moving ever so slowly to look at my campsite. Uh, I was able to park my blankets, and I was looking in my side mirror, and I'm, I'm, I'm just looking for any movement in the woods around me. I don't want them to see me in our, I really want them to think that my truck was empty, that the campsite was empty, so I couldn't move. So I'm looking into my side mirror, and it was so cold that I kept having to take a T-shirt and wipe my window from off my, my, my breath was fogging up the glass. So I'm wiping the mirror, I'm looking in the mirror, and uh, I saw a movement behind my truck, in the woods behind my truck. It was just shadow and movement. And, and I, I'm like, okay, there, there he is. He's he right behind my truck. And I was watching my mirror, and for the first time in that whole encounter, I see this figure right here. Step around, step around the tree like this. And go back behind the tree. And at that moment, I said, I'm about to get robbed. I'm either about to get robbed, or that's a big thing, right behind my truck. And, and my heart was starting to race. I mean, I'm getting excited. I had a video camera right beside me. I also had a gun. But the video camera, my plan was that if they would come in there, that all I'd have to do is if they move around in front of my truck, all I had to do is hit my headlights, catch me in my headlights, and I was filming through my windshield. That was my, that was my real plan. You know, plans go out the window when things start happening. And uh, the stick that he had, I never saw the stick. 
But from the sounds that I told you I was hearing, he had to have had a stick in his hand. He just had to. At that point, he hit a tree. It was a wood knock. And every researcher in here knows that wood knocks are the things that you will hear deep in the woods when these things are trying to locate each other and communicate. Tree knocks is just one of the things they do. It happened that night in close proximity right back there. <coughs> hit a tree. I did not see that. I just heard it. But Rock Creek was a, a, some distance behind him and behind my truck. There was him, some woods, him, and then Rock Creek was further behind him. I heard something coming across Rock Creek. It's a, it's a nice wide creek, probably 20, 20 feet wide uh, or, long, or more, anywhere from knee to five